Now let's talk about Israel well ahead of the posse in terms of the start of their vaccination programme and the, the acceleration of it. But now they've loads and loads of cases so what's gone wrong for them because it might go wrong for us? Well again it's very important because because there's great scientists in Israel remember and they're monitoring things all the time and measuring everything you know so the data we get from Israel is always very informative to every country really and as you've just said I mean they, re- they realised Delta arrives uh, they reckon it was brought back from people who went on holidays because the Israel Israelis opened up, as you may remember, and lots of people went on vacation, bring Delta back, and now the cases begin to grow. Uh, last week was double the previous week, so this is all these numbers are there now. And then remember, the fear was, well, hang on a minute, um, we'd heard Israel was really highly vaccinated, so why would they be getting this surge, a bit like us in some ways? But it turns out only slightly over half the population were fully vaccinated, so there wasn't quite as high a level of vaccination as other places. So that may be one reason for this. They opened up fully very quickly, by the way. All restrictions were abolished, uh, and that meant spread could happen, especially with Delta around, you know. But now the numbers are fascinating. In fact, so, so the serious cases are nine times higher in the unvaccinated people than the vaccinated. So in other words, the vaccines are working there to protect against serious disease. And then in the under 60s, it's double the rate in the unvaccinated population. So in other words, get the vaccine. The evidence is very clear there that the vaccines are protecting. And look at a ninefold higher risk if you're unvaccinated, you yeah. see, which is really important. And the seriously ill patients who are unvaccinated are mostly young, healthy people whose condition deteriorated really quickly. That's right. The, that's the, worrying. The majority who are seriously ill are unvaccinated. So we start with that fact that that's the, that's the statistics from Israel is the first thing. And then if you're over 60 and you have comorbidities and you're unvaccinated, you're in big trouble. That will progress into severe disease. You see. So yet again, you know, the vaccination is clearly the thing. But one thing is, if you are vaccinated and you get infected and some of those did become ill... Uh, the vaccine was given to you five months ago and that gave us the idea that maybe the vaccine's waning. So part of the evidence is in the vaccinated groups who become ill, they were, they had they'd vaccines earlier than others, you know, and, th- and that's why they're now starting boosting ca- their booster campaign because you know, the evidence is there and that the, the vaccine must be waning slightly. And it is waning slightly, but there's no, even though the um, study on the B cells I mentioned is a good one, there's still a little bit of waning going on, you know, slightly less antibodies. So so still th- that, that data said to the Israelis, we must start giving boosters. And they began with the over six these uh, they're now moving down to the over 40s are now going to get a third shot if you like you see so in other words they've said look we're going to start our booster campaign based on this data Okay, so uh, they'll be ahead of us uh, by a few weeks, so that could inform our campaign uh, when it happens, as indeed might the UK research into the the fractional dose. Now, um, a different topic, but related in a way to uh, the MNRA vaccines, and that is a vaccine for HIV. That's right. Now, we, we discussed this before, but the great hope here would be that what we've learned from the Pfizer and Moderna vaccines using RNA could be used for other vaccines. And that was always kind of one of the spin-outs from the whole COVID pandemic in a way. And now there's a big trial running with HIV and they've made an RNA vaccine to target HIV, that, that similar technology that Pfizer and Moderna have used. And if that works, you can imagine that that'd be tremendous because e- even though we can treat a- AIDS with, um, with drugs, of course we can, with the antiretrovirals and so on, a vaccine would be a really great way to stop AIDS and you never know that this technology then may be useful for HIV and they've spent years and years trying to get vaccines for HIV but and failed. It's a very cunning virus it, it, it embeds itself into your genome you need a huge antibody response to be able to show protection you know and now we know these RNA vaccines are giving massive antibody responses so again the idea there would be let's try it against HIV so so we're going to watch that closely because it would be tremendous but if we got vaccines for AIDS we, that, that's one of the holy grails of immunology for the past 20-30 years you see so again, we might learn from COVID and apply it to a different disease. Yeah. Are there any other nasty retroviruses out there that there you know, are the same some. technology could be applied to? Yeah, yeah, there's a few retroviruses lurking. HIV is the main one, of course, that uh, we reckon most of all. There's other ones as well, but HIV is the commonest. Um, people are wondering, uh, any other variants to worry about? This one says, what about the Lambda variant, which has taken a foothold in Florida, where deaths are the worst yet in the pandemic? Studies show the vaccines do not work against this variant, which originated in Peru. That's from John. That's still a variant of interest rather than concern, but it is there. It's been looked at very closely. You know, The evidence that the vaccines were failing was more lab-based, You know, using, say, blood from people who have been vaccinated was less able to neutralise it, various things like that. We don't have any evidence yet in, in, in the real world that it's it's uh, escaping the vaccines but of course it, it is a concern but there's no doubt about it and I think as you said earlier that that's always been our concern of extra variants cropping up that could be more malign hence the need to get 11 billion people vaccinated as soon as we can.
Um, Maria wants to know, can the booster be used as a standalone vaccine rather than having the two initial jabs and then the booster? Well, but does that mean like one shot of the booster? It's the same. Yeah, I think she just means you get one shot rather than the other. It wouldn't be a booster if you hadn't had the first two shots. It's 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 your first vaccination. It's the way the immune system works. The first shot kind of gets the immune system awake. The second shot really shouts at it, you know, gets it really going. And then the third shot really drives it, you know. So in other words, each shot is ramping up all the time. Uh, is the increasing hospitalisation in Israel not evidence of that the durability of B and T cells wanes quickly well, and the vulnerable? That's the point. Yeah, exactly. I mean, there could be a few reasons for this increase. Obviously. One is it's often healthcare workers who are vaccinated six months ago, and they're more exposed in the hospitals now, so they're inclined to pick up more infections anyway. You know, that that's one other possibility. And there was a drop in. Remember, the the, the um, they went down slightly. There's no question that there is a bit of waning going on, but we're talking 15, 20 percent waning, not huge waning. You see, and then again they don't really know because they often just measure antibodies and not the T cells. So it's, a, it's a, quite a complicated thing to pin down. That's why um, it's still a work in progress, Pat. And the WHO have said, let's wait till the end of September before we decide to wide, use widespread boosters because we need more evidence that waning is a real problem or not. You know, But there is evidence for it. So it's kind of a, it's very much a work in progress, as we said.